Hello, I'm Miami Township Fiscal Officer Eric Ferry, and welcome to this edition of Around Miami Township featuring topics about our community. Today I'll be joined by Lee Height, member of Engineers Without Borders, an organization devoted to partnering with developing communities to improve their quality of life. Lee? Thank you. Thanks well, for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. Well, Lee, you've brought some interesting things here, and uh, I guess we're going to learn all about, about those, but yeah. can you tell us a little bit about Engineers Without Borders? Engineers Without Borders is a group that started about eight years ago, when a group out in Colorado kind of was looking at some numbers, kind of figuring out what, what do engineers do? Well, we know what we do. I mean, the, the fundamental definition of an engineer is we use the laws of physics to uh, solve everyday problems. Well, who do we solve problems for? Well, it turned out that we solve problems. We design things, people build things, they sell and maintain them for about 10% of the world population. And it's the richest 10% of the world's population. And the issue that came up, and we're, and we're not the only organization doing this. There, there are several organizations. Engineers Without Borders is, is one that pulls all the engineers together. But the issue that came up was what about the other 90% of the world population that doesn't have access to goods and services that you and I take for granted? How big is that? Well, just I use a number just for reference. The population of the United States is about 309 million. That's under 5% of the world population. So about 10%, 650 million people out of 6.5 billion people get to use and have access to what engineers do. Well, that's an awful large number when you look at 90% that doesn't have regular access to that. 50% that rarely have access to uh, food, water, and shelter, let alone the other goods and services. So, what does Engineers Without Borders do? Uh, about eight years ago, out in Colorado, a, a group was looking at numbers and going, we need, to, we need to point our intellectual capital in a different direction. And they started this organization, and in eight years, We've gone from a handful of engineers to over 12,000 engineers that are on board who develop and design things for third world countries, developing countries that are either free or very low cost. Now you say um, you're in the Cincinnati chapter and have approximately how many people uh, are in the organization here and, and locally? We've got about 25 to 30 engineers locally. Uh, in the uh, professional chapter. There are two professional chapters in the state of Ohio, one here in Cincinnati and one in Columbus. We have very strong university participation. There's eight student chapters, student, student engineering chapters in Ohio, a very strong uh, chapter here at UC, University of Cincinnati. Around the country, a lot of the professional divisions will mentor the, the uh, student division because we're trying to re-educate re engineers to think about developing countries rather than do all of our thinking on all of our work for profit, which we have to do, of course, create a, a mindset that says we need to take care of the other 90%. We have about 25, 30 members here. There's about 350 chapters around the country that, that comprise that 12,000 engineers. Now, the 30 engineers that are part of the, uh, this chapter, um, I know you're retired. Right. Uh, is that uh, gen the general makeup of, of the group? Generally not. Generally. You would think it would be heavily uh, retired engineers. There's only two retired engineers in our group. It's exciting is they're all working engineers, almost all of them. Hmm. Uh, we have a very strong women uh, presence. A strong. We have all the disciplines from civil to mechanical to electrical, chemical, environmental. The fun part is they're all very much employed and working. They're current on technology. So when we go to do things, they're right up to speed on technology, while us retired people may or may not be up to date. The group as a general is very much up to date on what's going on. And it, it's a terrific uh, dedication on their part to, to take a working person and put in the amount of time that they do. It's, uh, it, we appreciate it. I guess let's maybe get into some of the specifics here because yeah. uh, uh, obviously uh, you know uh, you feel and, and know that your work is very important. Let's try to understand uh, why that is. Okay. Well, one of the things that happens in a developing country is just the basics. Food, water, shelter, transportation, health care. Things we take for granted, Things right? we take for granted. <laughs> they, don't, they don't have uh, any access to. One of the, one of the large issues that uh, technology has been able to help is cooking. Uh, they use, they have to cook their food. They have to, they, uh, quite often will have water that's not sanitary, so they have to boil it. Mm -hmm. 
and they will cut down trees for the wood for the stoves. Well, there's two issues there. Uh, the obvious one of cutting down the tree, and then the, the worst issue is it's not just cutting down the tree and losing the oxygen production. They're burning it in an open fire, which is producing smoke and, and CO2, which we'd rather not do. If you walk into the uh, living quarters of any of people in a third world developing country, your eyes will absolutely burn mm -hmm. from the smoke inside. 1.6 million women and children are dying just from the, breathing the smoke off their cooking fire, let alone all the illnesses. So how do you solve the problem? I want to point out, uh, Engineers Without Borders did not design this, but it's just, I use it as a, an example of technology. Came up with the idea of using uh, biomass material to burn rather than using wood. Some of the wood is, well, some of the trees are being cut down to make charcoal. Charcoal is a very big uh, use in, in developing countries. And what was developed was what we call biomass fuel briquettes. And these are decayed vegetation of one sort or another, depending on what country you go into. It may be banana leaves, it may be peanut shells, it may be coffee shells, any number of things. And what I brought here are typical examples. These we made right here in Miami Township. This is made out of oak leaves and paper pulp, sawdust and paper pulp. These were made today. This right here, these, these three, were living hosta plants two weeks ago. Oh, really? <laughs> End of season, time to cut down the hosta plants. Yeah, and I had, right. a, I had a whole uh, bucket full of uh, live hosta leaves. So I put them in a plastic bag and compost them, and they, they will compost uh, quickly uh, in two weeks. And I just made these briquettes this morning. This is 100% hosta leaves, and this is hosta leaves mixed with uh, wood chips. Hmm. It, it's just that easy. The village that we're taking care of, they have a lot of banana waste products, so we're developing a method to use uh, that. But that's just how easy it is. We'll take uh, half a dozen to a, to a dozen briquettes per meal for them to cook their food. Hmm. So biomass fuel briquettes is a very large part of third world uh, developing countries. And another issue, this issue of carbon monoxide in, in the living quarters, of course, is serious, not to mention the smoke burning your eyes. Sure. How do you solve that? Well, another group, not us, developed what's called a rocket stove. And this is kind of a high-tech solution. All can be built by hand. This is all built out of clay. Hmm. This particular one, I dug up clay in my backyard and hmm. made it. And what it does, the, the science behind it is real simple. It has a, a, a tube here to where you put in the fuel briquettes, light the fire, and it burns through the center of this hole, chamber in here, and it burns very, very hot. The whole principle behind this is to get a very clean burn so you have no carbon monoxide. And then you get a clean enough burn, you have no particulates, no smoke, and you can use this inside a living quarters and have absolutely a very safe environment. It's called a rocket stove, easy to build. They're all over developing countries.